The contraceptive mandate requires that Affordable Care Act compliant plans cover the full range of FDA approved contraceptives uh, without cost to the employee. There are seven cases that have been consolidated here before the Supreme Court. The main plaintiff is Bishop Zubik of Pittsburgh. There's also other Catholic groups like Priests for Life and the Little Sisters of the Poor. There's also several Protestant universities. All of these organizations are challenging the HHS mandate requiring them to provide contraceptives and emergency contraceptives to their employees. All of these groups have an objection to providing these contraceptives to their employee because it violates their religious belief. What the government wants to do is say, it's all right, what we'll do is have you sign a form that is basically a permission slip to allow us to use your plan and provide those contraceptives. So it would allow the government to co-opt the plans that these organizations provide to their own employees to give their employees the contraceptives and including abortifacient contraceptives that they object to. And that's what these faithful individuals and, and organizations say they can't do without violating their own conscience. The petitioners are arguing that they need to have an exemption because of a law called the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. This was a law passed in the 90s and signed by President Clinton. It says that when a religious group's sincere religious beliefs are being burdened by the government, that the government has to show a compelling interest in, in whatever it's doing that, that creates that burden and that it's narrowly tailored to that interest. So the government on the other side will claim they have a compelling interest in making sure that women are provided with these contraceptives. The government argues first that the religious beliefs aren't actually being infringed here because the bureaucratic mechanism by which the, the contraceptives are being provided is remote enough and far enough away from what the Little Sisters are providing that, that, that it doesn't actually uh, involve them in providing the contraceptives. They're saying that it's the insurer that's going to be paying for it or that it's the gov government that will actually be doing it and so the Little Sisters don't have to worry about it. They're, they're not the ones that are actually providing the contraceptives. They also would argue that even if your religious beliefs are being violated or are being burdened, uh, that the government has a very compelling interest here in providing contraceptives and also that this is really the, the most direct way to do it and therefore it's narrowly tailored to achieve that. The idea of finding the least restrictive means to achieve your compelling interest is something that we see throughout First Amendment law. It's really an effort to make sure that even when the government is trying to achieve goals that are good and the government has many goal things that it needs to accomplish, that it tries to find a way that does not infringe on people's religious freedom. Uh, when it does so. So the court will have to determine first, are the petitioner's religious interests burdened? And then does the government have a compelling interest in providing the women contraceptives in this way? And then even if they do, is this the narrowest way they can do it? Do they, is, is there another way the government can meet its compelling interest without burdening as much religious freedom?